<laughs> okay, you know, this started out as a joke. I wasn't really gonna go out there and talk about this too seriously, but upon further inspection, I feel like this actually deserves a serious conversation, and I think that's one of the funniest things we could have expected out of the Montreal Canadiens in 2023-2024. Because today, we are talking about one of the most incredible stories to have made his way onto the team, and how he compares with other what-ifs the Montreal Canadiens have had over the past few years. Today, we are talking about Josh Waugh, because man oh man has he been such an effective NHL player the past few weeks that there really is no denying the impact at this point. Waugh, in his short NHL career thus far, has a total point production of 9 points in 20 games played. Very good, considering the fact that he is in the first professional year of hockey he has ever played. Last year, he was in the QMJHL, and sure, he had 99 points in 55 games, very good number, but this season in the NHL and AHL, it's his first taste of pro hockey. He had 32 points in 40 games played with the Laval Rocket as well, by the way, if you hadn't already seen that. But Joshua, as a guy who is 20 years old, 6 feet 187, is, for all intents and purposes, a top 6 player with the Canadians right now. I don't think you could disagree with that assessment. Sure, he played such a small sample size compared to everybody else, but based off of how this Canadians team is meshing, how a lot of these young guys have come onto the team and established their roles, Joshua, in his very limited sample, has been one of the better ones. And right now, it's very difficult to consider Wa as a call-up at this point, rather than just a regular old Montreal Canadiens player, who happens to be 20 years old, who happens to be a first-year pro, who happens to be in a spot where if he continues down this particular development path, man, there could be a lot more to say about this guy in the upcoming years further and beyond. But of course, today's video about Joshua is not really just talking about Joshua. Because the reason we're making this video was a tweet that I saw on the Habitants Twitter account from yesterday, March 13th. Take a look at this. Point per game rates this year. Pierre-Luc Dubois has a .43. Joshua has a .45. And then you look into the replies. Remember when everyone wanted to trade Suzuki or Doc for Pierre-Luc Dubois? Another reply goes out there and says, hey, on the positive side, Pierre-Luc Dubois is smoking caught Kanyemi on points per game. And because this was such a funny idea, you know, I saw this tweet, I saw this thread, and I started laughing. I was like, you know what, I want to make a video about that. Let's talk about Joshua and his value in comparison to some of these other Montreal Canadian stories. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois was never a Canadian, but he certainly was a Canadian story for a good, what, year and a bit, pretty much? Everybody thought he'd get traded to Montreal. I was one of those people. You probably were, too. But now he's in LA, making $8.5 million a year till the end of 2031 at 25 years old, and he's got 28 points in 65 games played. He also spent some time on the fourth line, he spent some time in the bottom six, and we did make a few videos here and there talking about how the LA Kings were, apparently, already disappointed in the way that Pierre-Luc Dubois has performed this season. He has not lived up to the expectations, he has not been a top six, bona fide, every night kind of center, he certainly hasn't been playing at the $8.5 million cap hit mark that he is at, Yet his production is fewer than what we're seeing out of Josh Waugh. 28 divided by 65 is a point per game metric of 0.43. Josh Waugh's current metric of 9 divided by 20 is a 0.45. So PLD literally has a worse point production than Josh Waugh. I get it, the sample size is not the same, but Waugh is on pace for 16 points in 37 games played. If he played over a full calendar season, he would have had, what is that? 37 points on the year, and as a 20-year-old who was thrusted into a top-six role straight from Laval in the QMJHL, I think that's certainly okay. Meanwhile, for Jesperi Kotkaniemi, he's doing even worse. He's playing in the bottom six of the Carolina Hurricanes, that 
spot has been pretty much locked in for him now, especially with all the additions that the Hurricanes ended up making at this year's trade deadline. But Jesperi Kotkaniemi on the fourth line has 24 points in 65 games played. His point production metric is even worse, as if you do the math here, 24 divided by 65 is a point per game of 0.36. Joshua has legitimately been out there outscoring some of the guys that we thought would be, what, like mainstay number one, number two players? I mean... You go over to Jesperi Kotkaniemi and what he was for the Montreal Canadiens. His rookie year was fantastic. I don't think people will forget that anytime soon. In 2018-19, Jesperi Kotkaniemi was, I'm pretty sure, like the first ever athlete born in the 2000s and beyond to have played in the NHL, NFL, MLB, or the NBA. He was the first one. And his rookie season was so good that a lot of Canadians fans were hyped up. Hey, he's going to be better than Barkov. He outproduced Alex Barkov when Barkov was Kotkaniemi's age. And then the next year, there were some growing pains. The Canadians sent him down to Laval, and then they went to the finals the year after that, and Kotkaniemi had some clutch goals, so everybody thought that he'd be good. And then he signed the offer sheet, went over to Carolina, and now he's on, on their long-term books till 2030, making $4.82 million a year. It's been a very strange story for Jesperi Kotkaniemi's NHL development, but at this point, I guess all we could say is, hey, it's good that he locked in that bag, because right now he's not playing like a $4.82 million player. Josh Waugh, on the other hand, though, I mean, he's in the top six in Montreal. He's producing points. You could debate as to whether or not either of these guys, Dubois or Kotkaniemi, would be producing more if they were on the Montreal Canadiens, but... All things considered, when you talk about Alex Newhook and Nick Suzuki having center spots on the Canadians, and then you also have other guys rounding out the bottom six, like Jake Evans and, I guess, Tanner Pearson, it wouldn't really be guaranteed if a Kotkaniemi or a Dubois would have been placed on the Canadians and would have had higher production. But for Joshua, playing on that comfortable spot in the left wing in the top six, this is all this guy really needs. And because he's been playing so well, it's difficult to really vision what a ceiling could be. He's so good, he's so young, he's producing more than a bunch of established NHL players that for Montreal Canadiens fans... You just gotta laugh, like what else can you do in this situation but just be thankful to the hockey gods that be that Kent Hughes didn't bite, he didn't give the Winnipeg Jets what it was that they wanted for PLD, you have to be thankful that Mark Bergevin didn't bite, and he didn't match that offer sheet that Kotkaniemi was given from the Carolina Hurricanes, they said okay you guys want to sign him to that dollar amount, fine. Then you can re-sign him to a long-term deal and be disappointed when he eventually becomes a fourth-line center making four-point-something million dollars a year. The Carolina Hurricanes are in that spot. The LA Kings are disappointed with Pierre-Luc Dubois. And the Montreal Canadiens have themselves a rookie who has filled in that point production so eloquently as a fifth-round draft pick from 2021. Joshua doing what he is doing in this time frame is incredible because a fifth-round pick getting NHL time, that in and of itself is ridiculous. In order for a guy to get that ice time three years after being drafted, that's even more ridiculous. And for him to actually be producing is like the highest magnitude of ridiculousness that you can expect out of NHL draft stories. You want to go over to the 2021 NHL draft and look at fifth round players. Hey, let's scroll over to the fifth round and see who's made NHL impacts. Literally zero. There's nobody in the fifth round of the 2021 NHL draft who has made the NHL and played games except for Josh Waugh. And it's like that for most of the other fifth rounds, even earlier than that. Go over to the 2020 fifth round. There's only a few guys who have played NHL minutes. You've got Elliot Desnoyers from the Philadelphia Flyer system, William Defour from the Islanders, a bunch of French-Canadian guys, Isaac Phillips from the Blackhawks has played, Matt Kessel in St. Louis. Then if you go over to 2019, there are also a very small amount of guys who have played. There's only two, and one of them hasn't even played a single game. Mark Kastelik is the only player who has played a game from the fifth round in 2019. Point is, it's rare. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Joshua, a fifth round pick, is now a solidified NHL player, and he's outproducing Pierre-Luc Dubois and Kod Kanyemi. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99. And bye.